Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second one for this just because I didn't really like the quality or the way I did the first video. Alright. Basically, what I've done now, this was the top minus the, the overhead cover and as you can tell, the back of the aquarium right now or of the original cage. The reason I don't have the back on is because it's actually wedged behind this pond and the wall, those two by fours right there. And so I can't get it out. The next time I drain this tank all the way down, I'll pull it out and then I'll put that in place as well. The whole reason for me putting on this top was because the lazy turtles that I thought would hang out in the water, stay in the water, decided to climb out. The male, larger male, this guy right here with his nose sticking out the water right now, decided he'd take a stroll. So when I came home this afternoon, he gave me a heart attack because he wasn't in this cage. Now to the point in making this video. Somebody asked to see basically my setup. I was assuming, I am assuming you meant be, uh, how it was built. So that's what I'm going to explain. As you can see, I'm using real pre uh, pressed wood, not MDF board or, or particle board or any other stuff. I use real pressed wood and a two by four frame. for the setup. What I did, and like I said, it was originally a box designed to hold dirt for a savanna monitor, as well as to trap in humidity. It's not perfectly sealed, but this was my first major project that I did. And uh, I'm, it, it works, it's pretty solid. All right, so two by fours all the way around. This is the top, the top obviously wasn't meant to hold the same weight and pressure that the bottom was. I'll show you how I built the bottom here in a second. All right, I'll step back a little so that you can get a better view of it. The thing is huge, so it's kind of hard to get the whole thing in the frame. All right, so dimensions from corner to corner is eight feet. From corner to corner is four feet. And then from down here, top to bottom is two feet. This one is also two feet. All right, so make a box. Now. If you noticed earlier, and I'll show them again, it actually has wheels. I did this when I designed the monitor cage because I wanted to be able to move it around as I needed to in my garage where I built it initially. And they've actually come in handy since. I don't recommend doing this, especially when a, with a, a container that holds water, but um, so far it's been fine. I'm not moving anywhere, especially full of water. I'm not going to try. I don't want to break those wheels. I don't want to put any stress on anything, and it's doing fine the way it is. If you notice, compared to the top, I've got more 2x4s closer together. These 2x4s are roughly 16 to 18 inches apart. Oh, I'm sorry, that looks actually closer to 2 feet apart. And they're designed, or basically I wanted them a little closer together so that they could hold a little bit more pressure from the dirt that was supposed to originally go in here. So that's what's going on underneath the tarp. I can't really show you the, the bottom that well, but the bottom is also a two by four frame. And on the bottom, I basically made a, a checkerboard pattern out of, of two by fours, a trellis almost. The trellis was, again, that's where the bulk of the weight is gonna be is on the bottom of the, uh, the cage. So I added extra bracing and then the space between them is roughly a foot square, give or take, a couple inches across the entire four foot base by eight foot base to distribute as much weight and pressure as possible. The cage is held together by I think two and a half inch screws and then lag bolts as well just to make sure that uh, everything stays in place. This is not the most like I said structurally sound and 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 perfectly trimmed and, and straight cage because it was my first one and this wasn't its intended purpose but it does work if I had to do it again and I was to make a display cage for these guys literally this entire space the entire four foot tall by four foot wide by eight foot enclosure would be what I would use and the glass door plexiglass doors would be an actual one solid piece of glass or two solid pieces of glass broken up 
That way it actually had a viewing panel and it would be internally plumbed or it would be plumbed with a, a filtration system similar to what guys do with freshwater stingrays. Stingrays. I wouldn't do it like this. I've got the... I could potentially do that, but again, this uh, I'm, I'm, I move around pretty frequently with my job and I didn't want anything permanent until I know that I'm done moving around with, uh, with work. So this is the cage. Basically, the structure of the cage basically. And then I'm only putting up these walls on these three sides right now because I don't want for these guys to, I think what happened is he used those two crates as a step stool to slip out that side, then decided to go on a walk. So I'm putting up these three walls in hopes that he's not going to go out the backside and take a walk. If he goes out the backside, this entire tank will be drained tomorrow, and that fourth side will go on the back wall. I don't think I have to worry that much about this one because this one is on this corner and, and basically is covered on, on two sides where I think he could potentially escape out of this one. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Hopefully I'll still have three turtles in here tomorrow. I won't have a heart attack. And then uh, it'll wait till this weekend when I can drain it down when I do my normal cleaning and I can add that third wall. What you're seeing right here isn't the third wall or the fourth wall, I'm sorry. That's actually the top. I won't be putting the top on because I don't have lighting to go in here. The lighting that I'm using right now is just uh, the overhead lamp or overhead light for this cage. So that's pretty much in a, it in a nutshell. Hopefully I answered your question and uh, we'll call it a day.